Bill. And I'm John. <laughs> and we're the geezers on the go. Go, go, go. If you're planning a fall camping trip, come with us to Lake Anna State Park in Virginia. It's got campsites and cabins and yurts. It's got a big beautiful lake and 15 miles of trails for hiking, biking, and horseback riding. And it's just about right smack in the middle of Virginia. We're here at Lake Anna State Park in Spotsylvania, Virginia. We're in site number 28. It's a very large pull-through site has water and electric you can see how big our site is here surrounded by trees there was somebody here for one real quick this morning on the other side but right now you can see the trees are really pretty and we'll just take a quick look to show how big the site is it's got the little pole that i guess is supposed to be used for your garbage but i like to use it to <laughs> hang my lights on and big picnic table and then you have your fire pit and that over there there's nobody on that road and come back around here I have most of my little signs and things but you can see how big this site is a lot of the pull throughs are like this there are quite a few pull throughs and the back ends aren't bad either there's about I think it's 46 trailer sites but it's also interspersed with lots of yurts and cabins. Another little view of our campsite. I said we're at campsite number 28. Nice fall colors. A little cool this morning. It's only in the mid 40s, but very pleasant. And we'll take a, just a quick walk through the area by us here. There's a this site, right across from us, if you had some extra cars, or maybe if you had a boat, because there is a big lake here, you could park your boat there, or extra cars. And the bathhouse down at the end actually has a laundry in it. And these are some pull-throughs are really are pretty good, right behind the tree line on both sides. And as you can see how pretty the trees are right now, because it is the end of October. You can see here are some of the yurts. This one's right near the bathhouse, but there's another one that's kind of secluded back here because you could walk back through the woods and, and we'll get there in a minute and drive back in here. And as I walked back here, I got a little surprise. There's actually two yurts back here. So you just would drive back through here. And there's one there, and there's somebody down there who has, has a fire going. Oh, there's another one way back in there. Wow, that's pretty cool. This is Y2, and I guess that's Y3. And there's another one way back there. Here's the one that's the farthest back. This is Y4, and this is way the heck back in there. Well, one nice person out there, I asked, this, asked if they were heated, which they are not these jurors, but she said, yeah, go ahead and take a look. So here we're taking a look in at everything. Okay, bring your own linens. She said next time they'll bring some kind of a portable heater. I guess you'd have to have some sort of like a propane one. And then you can open up the roof if you want. And there's us again. I'm going to go over to this, the other loop here. That's, that's our loop. And I said there's sites that are right along the tree line. Most of the ones on this side, these are all back ends. But in the inner loop where we are, there's a couple of pull-throughs in a row. Very convenient for anyone who is, I always like to say, back in challenge. John sometimes says he feels guilty that we have a pull-through and he can 
back in just as well. This is our loop. There is another loop right before here that's from a 1 to 17. And although most of the sites in here look to have water and electric, there are a few that don't have any hookups. They're just, I would say, primitive. It's probably one of the only areas in this park, I think, that has no hookups. But there is a little water spout there. So I think it looks like 18, 19, and the one up here, I don't it's like 20. And there's one on this side, too, where the tent is. doesn't have any hookups. And as we come around our loop, it's a little glary here. We have to see some of the little cabins that are here. They're not quite as big as some of the cabins on the other side by the lake. But pretty nice. And then like I said they're interspersed with the trailers. Hey, there's one right behind there. There's this one. Looks like somebody's here. They were having a good time last night playing cornhole. And then one more up here. That's number 53. And then we come back around. And there we are. This is sort of the far end of our loop. It's actually, a, I guess, a second loop. And this one like ours has a few cabins but these also have some cabins here mixed in with the camping spots Oops, right now i said a very pretty time of the year in the second loop i think we didn't like it as much as the loop we we're in because i don't think the sites are as long but i mean some of them are like some only back here, these start in like the 30s. And get a little few tents. But this campground doesn't seem to have like a dedicated area that we, I would consider just tents, like we would say primitive area. It's all just regular campsites. And most of the campsites are gravel, which makes it pretty convenient not to. And most of them were pretty level. We hadn't, didn't have to do much of anything to level out our uh, trailer. These cabins here, uh, this is cabin one. And uh, I think when we come around the corner here, you'll see the lake behind the cabins. These are these cabins are right near the lake. There's the lake in the distance. These are very big cabins. Yeah, these are big. These are newer than the ones that are over by us. Uh, in the regular campground. These are newer and, and bigger and uh, probably better situated here close to the lake. That one, that one you can see how close they are to the lake. Just walk down. Yeah. It's a nice picnic table to the back and a grill and a fire pit. Yeah, they, they appear to have, uh, it looks like there's 17 cabins here at the uh, state park, which is quite a few. And they're, and these ones here are very nice. As you can see, there's lots of open areas here where you could go walk back into the woods, make your own trails, although there is quite a few good trail system here a couple that go around the lake and I think I noted before that you can also although they don't have any set say equestrian sites there are supposed to be lots of equestrian trails in this park to go bring your horse. Lake Anna uh, State Park is sort of in the middle of the state and it's a really big lake a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. Yeah I was surprised by how big the lake was I think it's one of the biggest lakes in the state. But... Right. And it was nice because we were there in the fall, lots of fall colors. We got our second dose of color. Second dose of fall colors and uh, lots of fishermen still out. Uh, right. There was uh, uh, boats all over the place. And, yeah, and uh, it has a nice big boat launch and there's a little bit of a pier. Um, it has a nice big beach except that you have to pay extra 
to go to the beach. Yeah, you have to buy a ticket. Uh, it's <laughs> not so much the cost of the ticket. Uh, right. how, 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 what was the ticket? I think it was only like four dollars. Four dollars, like but uh, people complained about having to stand in line for an hour in the heat, waiting to get right. their e ticket. Even if you're at, staying at the campground, you still have to pay extra. That's first. That was the first for us. But the campground itself is is nice. It has big spaces. There's quite a few. Uh, pull-throughs. It also has some yurts and some cabins, although they don't have any heat, so I'm not sure why you'd want to yeah, be cold. Yeah, and but. not much cell service if that's on your wish list, too. Right. But we were did stay, um, go to a place that's not that far from there. It was called the Spotsylvania Courthouse Battlefield. Oh, yeah. That's one of our favorite things to do. We love to, especially when we're traveling in the South, we love to go mm -hmm. to the Civil War battle sites. And this was one that I didn't know too much about and uh, was a real eye-opener. There were like 30,000 casualties. It right. was a long, two-week-long battle. Really bloody. But what's nice about uh, this tour, it's it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's actually part of the National Park System that you can drive through it and they have different stopping points, uh, points of interest so that you can stop, go and look at monuments and, and read some of the history. Yeah, we'll show you quite a bit of the Spotsylvania Courthouse uh, Battlefield. Uh, uh, we won't show you quite as much about uh, Mineral, though, which is the <laughs> town nearby that we went to. Um, it's a small town, but it, it's, it does have a, its claim to fame. Yeah, it's um, reminiscent of an olden days. The area was very big, actually, on gold mining. And at certain times of the year, the park rangers will take you out gold panning in the lake. And there is some old shafts, but you can't go there unless you have a tour guide because they're kind of dangerous. Yeah, we we also wanted to visit a little town yeah. called Cuckoo, Cuckoo. <laughs> which we thought <laughs> well, would be perfect for us. us. But uh, we didn't get a chance to go there, but uh, next trip. Right. Lake Anna is a man-made lake of about 13,000 acres with 200 miles of shoreline. It's a favorite for all types of water sports, but especially fishing with bass, stripers, and crappie among the target species. This is the boat launch area here at Lake Anna State Park. It's a very good sized lake and this is a nice boat launch with has a, a little docks on both sides so that once you put your boat in you could I guess tie up and then go park your car and trailer and have a picnic area all along the shoreline, you could come day trip, just come down have a picnic, and it's got big parking lots all up above the lake. And right now it's really pretty here because a lot of the trees are still have their full color. We're right at the tail end of October. This is the beach area that looks really nice with nice sandy beach and there's Somebody out fishing. Nobody here today. A little chilly. It's only about oh 55 degrees. It's towards the end, like I said, the end of October. Really pretty place though. So. Nice big area to come for a day to go swimming. And a big playground area. And a snack bar. Plenty of parking too. And did we forget to mention there's a winery right around the corner. We're here at the Lake Anna Vineyards. We're about, oh, five miles from the campground. And it looks like people are having fun. We're having some nice wines. They have, they have pretty decent whites and, and reds. This is their, they make all the wines from here. So there's some of, it looks like they just must have picked all their grapes already in the fall here. But really nice place. We re highly recommend. The Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse was the second battle of General Grant's Overland Campaign of 1864, and it turned out to be one of the bloodiest of the Civil War. Well, after a little bit of trying to find this place, this is actually a national park, a national historic site, and it's Spotsylvania Battlefield History Trail, where supposedly Grant chased Lee through all these little roads through here. And we're about, oh, 20 miles outside Lake Anna State Park, so here we are. The Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse was 
It was considered on the one hand to be an inconclusive battle um, because it was fought between um, Grant's Army of the North and Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. The Army of Northern Virginia took 13,000 casualties during the battle. This was in May of 1864. Um, the North, on the other hand, took 18,000 casualties. But as one soldier said, one Southern soldier, <clears throat> he could lose men and replace them. We could not. <laughs> so it, it really was the beginning of the end for Lee. Um, because it led to his eventual, uh, or the eventual siege of Petersburg and his eventual um, um, sur um, surrender. <laughs> sur yeah, surrender <laughs> at Appomattox Courthouse. Which isn't that far from here, actually. I think it's only about maybe 50, 60 miles, Appomattox. This is called the Bloody Angle Road and Trail. Yeah. Right here, this shows um, the mule shoe. The red line here is the uh, Confederate lines. And this is the way the Union attacked, trying to break down the uh, Confederate lines at the uh, tip of the mule shoe. They actually succeeded briefly but were beat back by the by the Confederates and some of the fighting then started to spill over into what was called the Bloody Angle Trail. And this was not even halfway through this what 15 day two week long battle. Okay after the initial Union attack uh, at the point of the mule shoe uh, they, as I said before, they, they, it sort of spilled over in what was called the Bloody Angle, which is down there in that field. And uh, it's sort of a little ravine where all the troops were pinched in together, and they fought hand to hand for days at a time. <laughs> Finally, um, Grant abandoned the field, uh, just, just left, and uh, which is why the battle was called inconclusive, but the Confederates had been so bloodied by then that they began to retreat and eventually wound up in Petersburg. If you, if you look at this little map, you can see, look at all the, all the soldiers that were supposed to be all in one spot there. Yikes. <laughs> it must have been awful smoky. And, and bloody. And there were no battle lines by that time. There were yeah. just... It, it was like watching uh, a medieval battle, yeah. all hand-to-hand, -hand, <laughs> bayonets. Much of the uh, tour of the battleground here at Spotsylvania Courthouse is a, is a uh, an auto tour uh, with a lot of uh, stopping off points along the way where you can park, uh, read the signs. That one's for uh, containing the enemy. Um, they have parking spots along here. Um, trails. Yeah, they have a lot of trails. Uh, I mean, you could uh, you can drive through in about uh, about half hour easily, uh, but you could spend all day here if you really wanted to. Well, we're sort of represented here from our home states. That's a monument for infantry people from New York State in the Civil War. And this one over here is dedicated to those who fought from New Jersey. So, my home state and our new home state. Right here near some of those monuments, there's something called the Confederate Earthwork. And they were mounds, you can sort of see them there. They were built as fortifications to hide behind, trying to save off the Union forces. With that, we're going to make a retreat of our own and head for our next destination. Thanks for joining us on our trip to Lake Anna State Park and, as always, we'll see you down the road. Stop! Stop! Stop!